morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season three and episode number 368 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Yeah. Today, recording day is Thursday, April 25th, 2024, and it is a beautiful day here at the Ottawa Beaver Lodge. A uh, completely blue sky from what I can see outside my window and not even a cloud in it. I'm your host, the Eager Beaver, pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver A, and with me, appearing slightly delayed on my screen, don't know if it was on yours, is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. A big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, The Peppermaster, The Miss Fee Mysteries from Corbin Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. We have a Thursday morning nibble for you, but before we do anything else, Mr. Grizzly. How's your mental health today? Because um, you had a very, very, very good evening. Well, sir, Mr. Beaver, uh, my mental health is great. I had a, I had a really good evening, actually. We, uh, we had a chance to hang out yesterday for a little bit. You had the opportunity to uh, meet Ms. Lola. Love uh, at first sight. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it you went both ways. Like, I knew you'd love her, but she loved you immediately. Oh, right away. Yeah. Now yeah. it may have helped that I had treats in my hands for our first meeting. That that yeah, hey, look, a little bribe to get in the club. You know, it's it's like the the toll you have to pay to cross the bridge, right? May have helped, but uh, yeah, from uh, that moment on, my God, you weren't kidding. One, that's a big dog. That's a strong dog. And when the dog says no. Uh, you're not going anywhere, human. You are now part of my pack, and you are snuggling with me. Yeah. Um, you're not going anywhere. No. <laughs> you're not going anywhere. <laughs> She's going to hold you down and in place. Yes. And uh, she has what uh, uh, what Mademoiselle Fox calls a scary face because for some reason, when uh, she's looking at you, she looks all sweet, and then all of a sudden, her nose like kind of scrunches up like like, like this. Gonna... And then, uh, yeah, and it looks like she's gonna like just gonna turn on you for a second, and that's just, she's just getting ready to stick her tongue out to go, give you a good like yeah. slurp. So yeah, that's it's, all. Uh, and I, I can see how people could be intimidated. I'm like, oh my god, she's gonna bite. No, she wants to lick. No, me. yeah, it, it was really sort of. Yeah, it was like, hi, you are now my human. Give me love. Now I eat your face. <laughs> it was like, ooh. <laughs> but once you got used to that, uh, that little thing going on. But listen, that puppy is love on four legs oh yeah 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 she absolutely four is. very 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 strong legs <laughs> four legs ah <laughs> uh, it is meant to be yes the first official meeting of mr beaver and miss lola took place and it was very 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 good i am pleased to report uh, as you can see over my shoulder the big boss alistair mcbear Making mm. sure we do a good job. There we go. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, Mr. Grizzly, it was a good evening for you because uh, you attended a certain event last night uh, that happened to be uh, good all around. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was uh, Super Kyle uh, texted me the day before and said, hey, uh, would you like to go to the PWHL game on Wednesday evening? And I was like, yes, yes, I would. <laughs> I hadn't had a chance to attend one yet. And I mean, hell. I've seen a couple of games on, well, I've seen a few games on television and they've, they've been great hockey, yeah. but look, you, you want to see a professional game. You want to see it in person if, and when you can to get yeah. the full experience of it. Right. You're going to get a feel of how fast it is, how hard it gets yeah. actually on three, right? Exactly. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, got there, uh, about six 30, um, got in and I ordered uh, a beer for myself, a beer for Kyle and some chicken wings. And that was $55. Yeah. Yeah, captive audience. Yeah, sports venues are worse than airports now. I remember when I was a kid, you couldn't, if you were in an airport, you were sweet, <laughs> you were shit out of luck, right? It was like, yeah. it's like $12 yeah. for a hot dog, completely reasonable. <laughs> what choice do you have, right? Right. But uh, yeah, no, no, we had a great time in Ottawa, took it to, tied it up late in the third, uh, brought it into overtime. Uh, played through the overtime five minute three on three, and then went to a shootout and won on the six shooter. Uh, and the woman scored the first and second goal to win the game. Yes, yeah, because yeah. they cycled through the shooters on the shootout, and yeah. then they started again. And she was exactly. the only person to have scored on the first round, and she scored on the second round, and that was the game winner. And it was the I did not know this uh, the season, but because uh, I tuned in to watch the game myself because mm -hmm. I was hoping I would see you on camera. <laughs> and uh, it seems that this was the seventh overtime of the season for Team Ottawa, yeah. and it not won one up until then. Wow. And it was very, very important because winning this game uh, gave some, uh, one of the team's sole position of fourth place in the standings, which is the fourth final playoff spot. So. Right. Ottawa right now has it, but there's a couple of games left in the season. So. I think three games left in the season. Ottawa plays their last game on Saturday at noon, 1230 actually, against Montreal. So, yeah, and you're right, Linda. Ottawa was slow coming together as a team, but they, they really are getting into it, and they are sitting in the bubble. So I think they're... Right now they're the hottest team in the league. They won the last yeah. four in a row. Exactly. So, I mean, as they're entering into the playoffs, it's like they're on the upward swing, right? So, it yeah. could, you know, it could look out to them. Look, look, it could look good for them. It, it looks promising. Hey, this town, as you know, you've been here for a playoff run. There's nothing like NHL or, or pro hockey playoffs in Ottawa, whether it's, well, the OHL is not professional, but you've yeah. seen the 67s on a run. The city gets behind yep. it. Yep. Senators, well, the city comes all you know, completely nuts, unglued. Yeah. And now that we have a, a PWHL team, and it was Pride Night last night, and there was like 90 yes. short of a sellout on a, on a Wednesday night. Yes. Wednesday night's a hard sell for anything in this city, no matter what, because it's a school night. It's it's midweek. You've yep. probably got a lot of things going on. But yep, there's still over nine thousand though. Yeah, seventy seven thousand nine hundred and ten. So ninety short of a sellout. Oh, okay. I heard for some reason I heard nine thousand on, on the broadcast, but no, it doesn't. It only holds eight. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's so, but uh, no, great, a great atmosphere. Uh, yes, it was Pride Night. Saw all the flags and all that kind of stuff, and people dressed in shirts and all that kind of stuff while I was watching it. So that was always a, a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, that was great. And then for a while, you know, I had uh, both matches on side by side. And uh, how about well, them Bruins? <laughs> yeah, the other Boston versus a Canadian team match didn't go as well. Well. It but it was it, still a good if, my two favorite teams are the Ottawa Senators and whoever's playing Toronto. So, so you were happy. You were very happy Grizzly yesterday. <laughs> so here's the funny thing. Super Kyle was cheering for both Boston teams. Oh, no. Like, Why are you cheering for them? He goes, ah, just to be contrary. I'm like, but you're the Ottawa guy. Like, you're, you got your Sen sweater on, man. He goes, yeah, I know. I'm just, you know. It was great hockey, though. Um, and, and there is hitting in PWHL. Oh, Not yes. a ton of it. Not a ton of it. And it, it's strategic though. When they, when they throw a hit, it, it's not dirty. It, it really is like an operational thing. You know, it's like, oh, there's the person with the puck there and the, I'll hit them. Yeah. It's clean hockey. It's really clean hockey. There was a yeah. few penalties, a couple hooking. There was a one major hooking penalty last night that we're, I sat there I'm like that one, 
how did that one get not called? It was right in front of the ref. And I looked at the guy sitting next to me and I go, dude, he goes, I don't know. That, that was a blatant hook. Ottawa should have been penalized. They didn't get it. No idea. So no body contact, not body checking. Well, there, I saw a few people get hit into the boards last night pretty hard. So Yeah, I heard that the, they they had asked them at the beginning of the season, like, how physical do you want this to be? Mm-hmm. And the women in the league said, oh, no, we, we want physical like this. So there, there is indeed, I'm not sure, contact. Body, body contact into the boards, if not outright checking. Uh, but there are apparently, there's apparently like no mid-ice checking or hits. No, no, it's just along the boards. That's true. Yeah. Just along the boards. Nobody, I didn't see anybody mid-ice get hit at one at any one time. Why the hell is my camera so blurry this morning? You look great at this end. Yeah, I know. On, on, on our feed, it's. I think it's. Well, I think actually, it's you are a little. Yeah, you actually are a little blurrier than I am. Yeah, yeah. I think it's restream because I just got the YouTube feed over here, and I'm just all blurry as hell, and I have no idea why. Because <laughs> I'm looking at my processor. It's only my processor's operation at it's 23 percent, so it must be my network feed. That's all what right. I figure. It's got to yeah. be the network feed, which is really frustrating because you know. I pay extra for. <laughs> yes, indeed. Ah, oh, well, I'm really happy you had a great time at the match. That's a yeah. mistake. Yeah, it was. A, uh, it was a good night. It was a really good night. I got to meet Carl's uh, girlfriend, M. Lovely lady. Lovely, yeah. good. Ah, yeah. oh, yeah. fantastic. It's like Carl's like become, becoming the pokeroo. We except I know he exists because I've seen him on screen <laughs> multiple times. Yeah, yeah. fun missing him in real life. <laughs> it's well, like he... super Carl was here. Ah, oh, and I missed him. At yeah. Well, um, <laughs> if you tune into Mademoiselle Fox's uh, fun and feminist conversations program this evening, there's a good chance you'll see him there. Ooh, smooth plug. Good chance you'll see him there. I'm, I'm not saying you will, but there's an okay. opportunity. Uh, okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right, kids and cubs. Uh, in the news, um, lots of stuff going on. Uh, there is some uh, fallout between Saskatchewan and the government of Canada with regard to the carbon stuff. Uh, it seems, uh, well, how do I put it? The prime minister did decide ultimately because Scott Moe begged and screamed and pleaded for this. Said, hey, the people of Saskatchewan still need to get their carbon rebate. And the prime minister was like, well, if they're not paying the carbon tax, then why should I? Um, but yesterday, it seems that the Prime Minister did indeed agree, or the day before, uh, that the people of Saskatchewan should keep on getting the carbon rebate. Now, I don't know if it's going to be adjusted upward or downward. Um, I don't but know. It seems that um, he was asked on Wednesday about Saskatchewan uh, withholding carbon tax payments. Uh, because uh, it, it is uh, about 55 days in arrears oh. for the most, uh, most up-to-date payment. And um, basically, the prime minister said, I don't know about you, but having an argument with the CRA about not wanting to pay your taxes is not a position I want anyone to be in, Trudeau told reporters. Good luck with that, Premier Mo. Yeah, that's not going to play out well for you. Not going to play out for you at all. That's, so, that's, gonna, that's gonna, you're going to fall flat in your face with that one. Yeah, it's been about three months since uh, the premier decided to stop collecting the carbon tax on natural gas and other heating fuels, although he is charging it to people on electricity. He has been doing that since January first, twenty twenty three, but I'm not sure if he let people know he was doing that. Just, I don't know. Know. He also raised the provincial income tax on a couple of uh, things as well while he's there, uh, and. Uh, he keeps on bragging about Saskatchewan being the most affordable place to live and uh, record exports, but apparently the prime minister is trying to kill their economy. Yeah, it's kind of a little inconsistent, kids and cubs. Um, but yes, um, the prime minister uh, basically reported uh, back that, uh, you know, hey, uh, as prime minister, it's again not for me to tell the CRA who to investigate and who not to investigate, who to pursue and who not to pursue. But the CRA, uh, well, getting money back from people is kind of the thing they do. And, and well, you know, you're the premier of Saskatchewan, so it's kind of like they know where you live. So, <laughs> so yeah, according to iPolitics, 
uh, says, Smithers released the hounds. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's press conference took on a Simpsonian tone Wednesday when he said it was the Canada Revenue Agency's prerogative to determine what penalty Saskatchewan should face for withholding the carbon tax payments. And the famous quote that I, uh, that I read to you. It's been three months since Saskatchewan's premier decided to stop collecting the carbon tax on natural gas and other heating fuels. Mo repeatedly expressed his frustration last year after the federal government implemented a three-year pause on the policy exclusively for home heating oil. While the pause was applied all across the country, pundits viewed it as a carve-out meant to appease Atlantic Canadians who disproportionately use the fuel to heat their homes. Months of threats from Mo came to head last month when Saskatchewan missed the deadline to remit the carbon tax funds to the feds. As reported by iPolitics, the situation is unprecedented under Greenhouse Gas Pollution Pricing Act, which outlines the federal carbon pricing program. But one legal expert says Saskatchewan is risking a multi-million dollar fine by withholding the payment. And uh, residents of the province of Saskatchewan, if you are charged that multi, if the province is charged that multi-million dollar fine, you have the privilege of paying a secret carbon tax that you didn't know you were paying, and the fine for your premier's petulance. So basically, your premier is using his opposition to carbon pricing as a PR move for himself. All the taxpayers' dollars of the residents of Saskatchewan that are being spent on him going in front of the camera, crying about a carbon tax, moving mountains to not make a Made in Saskatchewan program to avoid the federal backstop, all the time he goes to court, all that time is time you're paying for. So you're paying him to not tackle the crisis. And now you're paying for his PR because he's using policy as a manner to, as a way to distinguish himself from other people, which is fine. That's what you do in politics. But he keeps on going to that well and he keeps on dedicating a lot of resources to doing that. And it's basically self promotion. He's promoting the part, his party not just as government by doing that. My party is the one that will save you from, that will ax the tax, let's just say, right? So he's doing those two things. And then on top of that, because he's doing it in a legal manner, there's a fine coming and the fine is not coming out of his pocket personally. It's not coming out of the salary, collected salaries of the Saskatchewan party, members of the provincial legislature. It's being charged to the province of Saskatchewan, which means you and the taxpayers pay it. So you're paying for his PR, mm -hmm. you're paying for the privilege of higher insurance costs or the inability to even secure insurance. You are paying for more droughts and floods in a province where agriculture is a main source of revenue. You're paying, I think I mentioned it, for his PR once again, and now you're paying his fines for his illegal activity. And I don't know about you, but if I had to pay a carbon tax that would actually have an effect on reducing the amount of GHG emissions and the emissions are being reduced in Canada. We have bent the curve from the 10 years or nine years of Stephen Harper doing SFA. And we are actually- Although he did come up with the carbon pricing scheme. Yes, but he's running away from it now, right? And of course all he is. in the press are goes like Stephen Harper never said that. He said like something about joining some cap and trade type thing like this. I distinctly remember him standing in front of the mic saying rising eventually to sixty five dollars a ton. Yeah. I've that seen doesn't it. sound like cap and trade to me. Yeah. I've seen it. It's not uh yeah. it's not fake so, news, it's real. Yeah. So a little bit of revisionist history there. So but yeah, you know I could pay a carbon tax that actually is having an effect, the carbon tax on individuals alone is counting for about eight to 10% of the reduction. The carbon mm -hmm. tax on individuals and large emitters together is counting for about 30%. So I could pay for something that's actually having an impact or I can pay a multi-billion dollar fine and the PR campaign fees of someone who will do absolutely nothing to stop from my fields from either catching fire or being submerged in water. And they are suggesting or that we out of the, ground by the, wind. The, the worst wildfire season on record is upcoming after we just got through the worst wildfire season on record, which by the way, never actually ended. In Alberta, they were burning right through the winter. 
right through the winter. A lot of them were burning on the ground. Yeah. On Tuesday, Environment Minister Stephen Gabo said he couldn't predict how the process would play out, but noticed the CRA has various quasi-judicial tools at its disposal to secure money owed to the federal government. In a statement to iPolitics, CRA spokesperson Kim Tsifo said she was unable to discuss specific cases because of confidentiality provisions in the federal legislation, but noted her organization can take action 90 days after it gives notice to the individual or entity that failed to pay. Wednesday marked 55 days since Saskatchewan missed the deadline to remit the funds. Quote, failure to meet filing obligations can result in a penalty, said Tsifo. This includes penalties for late filing, failure to comply with the demand to file, and or making a false statement or omission on a return. Under the legislation, reported or misreported amounts on return could result in a penalty of 5% of the amount required to be reported on the return. If the unpaid amount, amount exceeds $1 million, the minister may collect up to 50% of the total. According to other news outlets, Saskatchewan remitted $172 million to the federal government in carbon tax payments last year. Despite Saskatchewan potentially being on the hook, Trudeau also said Saskatchewan families can still expect to receive their full quarterly carbon tax rebate. Energy Minister Jonathan Wilkinson had previously said Saskatchewan was with, would miss out on the rebate, considering the province was not collecting the tax, but Trudeau said this week his government did not want to punish people because, quote, of Premier Moe's ideological opposition to fighting climate change. Premier Moe has decided he doesn't want to pay the money to CRA that he is owing, said Trudeau. We're not going to penalize the people of Saskatchewan or any jurisdiction for that because we have faith in CRA, which is an independent agency to collect the money that is owed. Now, I don't know if you realize this, but this is the prime minister being pretty damn gangster. Yeah. Yeah, very much like, so. So the, oh yeah, um, that's okay. Um, people of Saskatchewan, don't worry. You'll still keep on getting the full carbon thing. But um, yeah, we will let you know every damn second that you're paying this fine. And um, well, I don't really need to get involved because um, well, the system will take care of him. It's effectively what he said, right? I mean, well, remember that Eddie Murphy joke? Yeah. <laughs> I was talking about remember when you could beat a woman? Yeah. Never, you never should have done it, even though there was a time it was considered socially acceptable. Um, Why don't you just go to sleep? Exactly, right? Like this, it's like I hit her like this, and then she, and then I got all cool on her and says, oh, baby, you made me do that. You brought that upon yourself. And then she got more cool on me and scared me. She says, yeah, yeah, you're right. I, I did bring that on myself. Why don't you just uh, go to sleep? Yeah, and then I, always... I got out of my own damn house. So it's like, it's like Justin Trudeau just basically pulled up. Yeah, Scott, that's nice. Um, um, you have to sleep sometime, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, can't wait to see how that pans out. But uh, the Prime Minister was in Saskatoon on Tuesday as part of his post-budget promotional tour, notified Moe's office of his visit. But just as was the case for Daniel Smith, they did not meet. Although Moe really, really, really wants to have a meeting with the Prime Minister to talk about the garbage stuff so long as it's all of all the First Ministers together and there's a TV crew there, but he won't meet with them one-on-one -on -one when he actually comes to the province. But he really wants that meeting. He wants to take every opportunity to fight for the people of Saskatchewan. When the Prime Minister comes to town, lets them know, says, hey, I'm going to be in town. And the Prime Minister Brown goes, I'm sorry, I'm conditioning my hair. <laughs> but he really wants to talk to the Prime Minister, and he really wants to solve this people of Saskatchewan. Moe's fighting for you. No, he's not. He doesn't give a shit. Never has, never will. Doesn't give a damn about the people or the, or the province. All he cares about is money and power, how to yeah. get it and how to keep it. That's it. That's all. Here, Nothing more. And here's the thing that the premiers of both Alberta and Saskatchewan I don't think appreciate yet in their strategies. Um, the liberals have no seats in Saskatchewan. Yeah, they got nothing to lose. They have very, very, very few seats in Alberta. It's not like they've got anything to lose in terms of losing votes or seeds by pissing you off. Then they got nothing to lose. Nothing. So you guys decided X number of years ago to encourage everybody to vote blue no matter what mm -hmm. for everything all the time. So 
then an election comes and go, we don't have a voice in parliament. Well, whose freaking fault is That's that? Fault. When you voted. <laughs> it's like you decided that you are not going to vote to have a voice in cabinet or in government. Well, you do have a voice in government because all of parliament is government, but that you weren't going to have a voice in cabinet. You decided that. You punished your, you, like, you kicked yourself in the teeth there. Yeah. So, but I mean, you basically have a guy that doesn't really have much to lose in that region. He's got no reason to play nice. None whatsoever. See, he's like, oh, what? What's going to happen? I'm going to lose votes? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all didn't really think this one through. Clearly. Y'all didn't really think this one through. And again, we showed you that clip the other day of the minister of Saskatchewan. I can't remember what he was the minister of. So, like, you know, so, you know David Cochran going, it's like, you guys swore an oath to uphold the law and the Constitution. So, well, I wouldn't I'd recommend anybody else to do what we're doing. <laughs> like, then perhaps maybe not do it. I would suggest you you don't do those things. Just, you know, maybe don't do that. Then all of that, these are things you think of again. My arm hurts when I do this. Don't do that. <laughs> Life changing. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I don't know. It's like, it's like I'm becoming more like Crick Pete. Sometimes mm. my only comment is like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I start laughing because it's just right? so damn freaking ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh my God! So yeah, uh, Scott Moe's throwing, stomping his little foot, saying, "You know, I'm not going to give the money." Prime Minister basically said, "For all intents and purposes, just watch us. <laughs> We're going to collect." Uh, then, uh, as well, uh, in the news, um, there was fallout yesterday oh, a from. Bit. Um, uh, I so from uh, the man, I still maintain, and, and it's really weird because I asked the question a bit on the web, uh, on the social media feed. Uh, now, listen, this could just be pure confirmation bias, but um, I'm not the only one. In fact, I'm very far from the only one who had the impression that. Um, Skippy was coming down from a rather big bender. Yeah, well. I, I'm just saying, I have a theory, and I say it, and I say this total speculation, but I say it based on the fact that for 10 years of my life in foster home, I mm -hmm. grew up in a home where alcoholism was an issue. And then the first person I linked with myself romantically as a young adult, uh, we were together for four and a half years and best friends for close to 26. And there again, alcohol was a big issue. So um, I am very familiar from personal experience with a, being on the receiving end of someone who's on a dry drunk. Oh, yeah. Looks, sounds, feels like. Um, I get all the feels. Yeah. That's the extent of my knowledge. And plus, you know, a lot of the references to alcohol again and again and again, if you pay attention to them. Um, but he was disheveled. Uh, a lot of people called Puffy, which I might end up being a hashtag at some point. <sighs> Somebody's going to start one. I'm not going to start yeah. one because, like I said, alcohol is not something to laugh at. Uh, if that's the case. Um, but it was like expected at some point, somebody's going to start like a hashtag Puffy Pierre or something. Yeah, I can see that happening. Right. Uh, or Puffy Daddy. Mm -hmm. There's lots of places you can go. Um, but I'm not the one who, not the only one that's noticed it. And I'm not the only one that's saying it. And it's one thing when it's, um, just, you know, random people like you and me, mm -hmm. any standing socially in that sense, or any titles or any position or honorifics um, on the web. Uh, 
But Evan Scrimshaw uh, had no problem putting it into print. Yeah, um, I just I, I just pulled up his his article here, and I have it right in front of me. Yeah. Do you want to start with it? I'll start with it. Yeah. What the fuck were they thinking? Pierre Polyev was on the East Coast Tuesday night and decided to visit some people. I'm sure he'd describe them as regular Canadians that he's fighting for. But it was less that and a group of Diag Diagalon supporters currently staging some form of protest and camp in anger at... Well, that's unclear. The opposition leader, who seems frankly hammered, met with a group who, amongst other things, is led by a man who talked about wanting to rape Polyev's wife. This thread has all the weird interactions. Polyev's disinterest in actually listening to them, his repeated claims that he'll axe the tax, but inability to say anything else. But it's an incredibly weird set of decisions. The thing about Polyev is that he is frighteningly online, for sure the most online of any world leader. His belief in crypto stemmed from deep diving on YouTube. He tagged all his videos on social media with an incel hashtag. He is convinced Jordan Peterson is more than a glorified moron. He's also usually smarter than this. When the convoy rolled through Stittsville, he showed up and brought coffee to some people, but he avoided going to the hill, which means there's no videos or pictures of him standing beside or in the frame with the various lowlights of the Nazi and or Confederate flags that littered Ottawa. That was an intentional decision, and yeah. one that has helped him. And now, the strategic sense of February 2022 is gone? I've been very cautious to use this platform in recent times for Polyev bashing. It's neither productive nor authentic to turn it up to 11 at every single provocation. If everything is evidence that Polyev is a far-right extremist, people will have their eyes glaze over. But this is actually frightening, and I still can't believe the Tories are letting themselves get this cocky. At some point, it doesn't actually matter what your personal politics are. I've written in these pages before that Polyev has never particularly shown his hand about the things he believes, and he's been on both sides of both gay marriage and abortion in his time in Parliament. Discerning what is the real Polyev and what is the fake one is a game of guessing. We don't know what, what's his real heart, and we can't know. What we do know beyond a shadow of a doubt is that the benefit of the doubt cannot be extended. What aboutism is a dangerous game. But we've seen the right to play uh, the company you keep card with Trudeau, tying lunatic protesters to Trudeau is fine because he's insufficiently draconian and overstepping all jurisdiction and norms to stop protests that people find abhorrent. But Polyev deserves the benefit? Fuck no. Polyev didn't even do what you could claim he went there to do, which is to listen. Right. He was point blank asked if he had any questions for them, and his response was a platitude about the carbon tax. He has tied himself to an organization with this appearance that, once again, he is led by a man who openly fantasized about raping Polyev's wife just to show they can do it, and he just legitimized them. The front page of the National Post today is a column from Tasha Caridian about how Canada needs to put down these protests because of the content of their beliefs. It goes without repeating, but I will again, the people defending Hamas are scum. There is no justification to glorify killing civilians, but to say that the content of one's speech is relevant to whether it is acceptable is a far cry from the way the alleged free speech guardians on the right handled the odious elements of the convoy or this group. Here, here it's treated with kid gloves of people being led astray by some form of legitimate grievance, and the fact that the originating grievance is legitimate absolves the fact that the people the alternative PM just met with are a dangerous far-right group. If I wanted to, I could make the same case not to condemn pro-Palestinian activists who cross the line, but I don't, because no matter what, people are responsible for their own actions. The most frightening aspect of all this is the utter contempt the institutional right has for the people whose votes they court. They want the votes of people who believe batshit ideas, who think that Justin Trudeau is a communist, who think that he is in House of Commons to a global cadre of people who secretly control everything. Or in hoc, I, I guess. In, in hoc, yeah. Yeah, in hoc to a global cadre of people who secretly control everything. For all the talk about the left's anti-Semitism problem, which parts of the broad left do have, have there's little comparative link or ink spilled about the right's obsession with anti-Semitic conspiracies in the same way that Zionist is often just a stand-in to say Jew, so is globalist. 
but no. Soros or WEF. Yes, exactly, precisely. These are the people that Polyev just assured have brought support. The most valuable asset of a politician is their time. Given that this was an impromptu stop driving from PEI to Nova Scotia, it's arguably more concerning. Polyev could have just driven by. This was something he was under no obligation to acknowledge, let, a, let alone arguably endorse. He is playing fast and loose with a group of lunatics, and that's fucking terrifying. Not only endorse, but telling them that everybody in Canada is with you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, sorry, I'm part of Canada. I'm not yeah. with them. So not you just lie. Not everybody. <laughs> Even if you don't think this means he will govern as if he is one of them, which, given his platform, is not a safe assumption, this is terrifying. The presumptive next prime minister is, at the most charitable interpretation, reckless with who he engages with and willing to lie to anybody for their votes. Either he knows exactly who they are and knows they're the lunatic fringe, or he doesn't and his claim that the country supports them is just platitudinal, platitudinal nonsense and more empty words, neither of which is good. Polyev is overwhelmingly likely to win the next election. The lack of initial budget bounce in Angus Reid or Ipsos is concerning for the idea the Liberals will be able to hold him to a minority or even keep him under 200 seats. I am not making any form of prediction about whether this will matter, but it fucking should. Polyev's seemingly drunken meeting with the lunatic fringe says a ton about the man. Canada is seemingly about to elect, and absolutely none of it is good. And I can't argue with a single statement. Yep. He's right on all fronts. Yep. It's, it's really disturbing. Yep. It is. And uh, I watched most of the clips the other day, or, or yeah. all of them. And, uh, yep, yeah, he shows up there, starts talking to them. Uh, at one point, they're talking to him, and then he changes the subject to how beautiful the sunset is because he really has nothing else to offer. Uh, at some point after them, like, you know, showing them everything, giving them the tour and all that kind of stuff, you know, they ask him, you know, it's like, do you have any questions for us? He goes, no, no, just not. I'm going to ask the tax. I'll ask yeah. the tax. I'll ask the tax. Yeah. Um, you stopped. Other than, hey, where are y'all from? When she asked him, you stopped. And I love how people. Early, you should have a question. People defending it said, well, he's engaging with Canadians. Yes, he is. Yeah. Um, one of the that Canadians has a fuck the law tattoo on his arm. Yeah. The head of the, 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 the troop of or, or the horde of it, blissful ignorance. One lady is bragging about sleeping in her car. Yeah. And he's sort of like, oh, yeah. As opposed to, wow, sleeping in your car. Like, can we maybe get you a tent? Yeah. Can we help <laughs> sleep you out? Like, We're offered this, help. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. Here, let me show you how you sleep in the trunk of my car. Oh, okay. Is it the trunk? Uh, one woman was sleeping in a trunk. One woman was sleeping in the back seat. Yeah. There was a couple of them, or, or at least that was what I was led to believe by what I read and saw in the videos and, and the attached um, yeah. uh, script. Now, the diagonal on flag thing, so it has to be precise. It's not like people were standing there with diagonal on no, flags. The diagonal on flag was drawn, hand drawn. On, on the, the door, of the trailer door, uh, but there were ripped up Canadian flags, there were fuck Trudeau flags. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe there was an actual, maybe some of the people there actually did possess an actual diagonal flag, but don't know. no, of we don't know. Uh, but it was, uh, it was drawn on the door. I guess you could make a case that I didn't see that because you know, don't oh, I saw it. everything that's written. I mean, yeah, I saw it too, but like this, but you know, somebody like. To a little arrow and pointed it oh, yeah. out. He may not have saw it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He probably yeah. didn't see it. Uh, but <sighs> there's also a lot of people saying, well, he's in Nova Scotia. That's a diver's flag. I'm like, the diver's flag is white, a white stripe on red. Yeah. The diver down, like this. Like, and then some people are taking, like, the flag, the flag of Trinidad and Tobago says, well, do you have a problem with this flag? No, no, no. That, that was, yeah. that's a. <sighs> And everybody's like, the Diagon movement's a joke. It started out as a joke. It did. It did start out as a joke. But now, 
you have a group of people who are under surveillance by certain government entities because they have threatened the lives of people. They all took it just too damn far. <laughs> a great number of these Diagonal movement people are armed. They're white nationalists. These are dangerous people. Yeah, started as a joke, but now they're taking it seriously. So we should too. Yeah. I have a clip here from Rachel discussing what we were just talking about. Please do. About two minutes and 20 seconds, and it's good because Rachel does her work. Let's just... uh, Let's go full screen here. Eh? Conservative leader Pierre Polyev just visited a Freedom Convoy style encampment in Nova Scotia, where he told the group, quote, everyone's happy with what you're doing, and went inside an RV that has a Diagolon flag drawn on the side. Yes, this Diagolon. Here's what's going on. Yesterday, Polyev showed up in a live stream from a group that's been protesting at the Nova Scotia New Brunswick border since 2021, according to Luc Lebrun of Press Progress. First, they were opposing public health orders, but like many other members of the Freedom Convoy movement, have since ballooned into protesting the carbon tax as well as a variety of other conspiratorial grievances. Thanks to the cookie lady on Twitter who first caught this, I got my hands on this live stream. Well, have basically just glad hands, speaks in slogans, and takes some pictures. Very normal, human pictures. Here's a key moment from that live stream. He also goes into this RV where this is painted on the side. This is the flag representing Diagolon, and it's wild to see Polyev standing so close to it because of what these dudes stand for, which I've reported on at length, but includes them live streaming themselves laughing at people in India being brutally killed by trains. Make sure you clip this one so you can watch me laugh at Indians getting run over by fucking trains. Because I reported on this, they said they would laugh if I was sexually assaulted to death. If you got gang raped to death by Indian migrants in the street, I would laugh. I wouldn't even stop them. They've done interviews with literal neo-Nazis and even threatened to assault Pierre Polyev's wife. Despite that, Polyev is pandering to folks who apparently travel in these same circles, or at least did at one point, if this truck is any indication. Even with these efforts, the Diagolon dudes don't like Polyev. They're memeing and laughing at him right now. A little advice, Polyev? They're not gonna pick you. At least not right now. More on that in a sec. I reached out to the Canadian Anti-Hate Network who told me Polyev's support for this encampment is embarrassing and alarming. And he should answer for this. As for Polyev, his team did not reply to my request for comment, but sent this to CBC. And while Diagolon is currently distancing themselves from Polyev, who is terrible for their anti-establishment street cred, it's worth re-upping this clip I found in 2022 in which Diagolon discuss using Polyev to forward their agenda. You can make him do things because he's a weasel. That's what's kind of interesting about it. Yep. So this is where we're at, Canada. What do you think of all this? So that last fella talking in the clip, Alex of Rend, the ferryman's toll, that was the guy who filmed me in the streets. And ah. when the police showed up, he ran away like the fucking coward he is and wept like a fucking infant when he was arrested. So fuck you, Vrend. I'm not afraid of any of you pricks. You're all fucking cowards. Sorry, I went off on a tangent there. Mm-hmm. My hackles get up when I think about that. Yeah. I can understand that. Well, I, mean, I don't want to be the angry guy online. I don't. I don't. No, but they they filmed you yes. to make you look like a crazy person. That was that was their goal. That was the objective. It backfired on them. Was to then, really then he says, it. then he says, "Well, I made you famous." I'm like, "Yeah, actually, I was famous before I ever met you, you asshole." I had a radio show in the '90s. People know who I am, so go fuck yourself. Yeah, exactly. It's like I made you. Yeah. No, you didn't. You, you keep thinking that. <laughs> now, uh, the Prime Minister, uh, also not particularly impressed with Pierre showing up to that. I don't know what it is. It's like this Pierre used to like be very, very, very good at controlling the narrative, but now he just seems to be handing gifts. Yeah. Left Center. I don't know what happened somewhere along the way. I don't know if the three weeks of the federal government just wrestling the agenda away from him on uh, the budget stuff left him going, but but hey, 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 this is supposed to be about me. It's my show. Hey, hey, hey. And now he's just scrambling and panicking to get their uh, free media. I don't know what it is because, I mean, he's not getting free, free media on policies because it doesn't have any. 
come and discuss. I mean, there's only so many times you can invite someone for a four to five minute interview when they'll say ax the tax, ax the tax, and nothing else. The shtick gets a little old and tired pretty quickly. It's like, you're only as good as your last hit, Pierre. Ax the tax has been on the charts for a while now. Yeah, well, have you seen this one? This is recent. Put this on the screen. Oops. There we go. If this doesn't scream Trump, then you are not listening. From Pierre Polyev, he tweeted this yesterday. At 9.04 p.m., carbon tax Carney gave a major leadership campaign speech to Liberal Interest Group Canada 2020. He's after Trudeau's job and Justin's best friends are helping him. Carbon tax Carney. That is right out of trump's playbook yep. start they're starting to define him already even though like i said the the successor the next uh, carbon tax army so, so it is they clearly they fear him because you don't start defining someone who hasn't even announced they're running if you don't fear them um so according to the canadian press as liberals try to reverse the political fortunes with the latest federal budget prime minister justin trudeau ratcheted up attacks against his conservative opponent on wednesday tying him to a far-right american figure polls suggest the liberal budget released last week has yet to resonate but trudeau suggested it's still more of a plan than what podiev has on offer other than trying to exploit public anxieties during the stop to promote the budget in Oakville, Ontario, Trudeau was asked about Polyev's recent appearance alongside anti-carbon price activists in Atlantic Canada who were waving expletive-laden late, late, flags bearing the Prime Minister's name. Every leader has to decide how they're going to operate, Trudeau said. Are they a kind of leader that is going to exacerbate divisions, mm. fears, and polarization in our country, make personal attacks, and welcome the support of conspiracy theorists and extremists? because that's exactly what Pierre Podiev continues to do. Trudeau's attack mirror messaging the Liberal Party has been pushing online. In a post on X, Housing Minister Sean Fraser used Polyev's visit to accuse him of courting the far right, suggesting Canadians volunteer for the Liberals by asking, quote, want to help keep the extreme right out of Canadian politics. A spokesman for the Conservative leader said Pierre, quote, made a brief impromptu stop. Yeah, the brief and the impromptu. Mm -hmm. For the least worst things about this stop. You think? <laughs> That's the most generously kind way you can describe that stop brief and impromptu because everything about about it was like, <laughs> uh, Sebastian Skamsky said, Pudyev greeted them because he saw it, quote, was a, quote, anti carbon tax protest and because of his vocal opposition to the federal consumer carbon price. Well, uh, if you actually listen to their interaction, there wasn't much talk about the carbon price. No. Just so you know. So I'm guessing that's an after the fact reason. Hmm? If Trudeau is concerned about extremism in Canada, Skamsky said, he should be paying closer attention to the protests against the war in Gaza. Some of them have included demonstrators praising the deadly October 7th attacks against Israel by Hamas. Both Trudeau and Polyev have condemned such rhetoric. Yes, yes, you have condemned such rhetoric, rhetoric, such rhetoric. but uh, as we mentioned before, uh, when you start playing the what about, um, yeah. yeah we will point out the fact that uh, you actually exploited the Jewish community on the first day of Hanukkah in order to get out of a vote marathon so that you could go to a fundraiser and somewhere during the day during that time while you were exploiting the Jewish community, you voted against funding a Holocaust museum and a Jewish community center. Or all the times you talk about source, you know, you're saying you have a problem, that you're on the side of the Jewish people and you have a problem with Jew hatred, but you keep on using the source and the WEF references yeah. all the time. This. or Lori Goldstein from The Sun, you know, that paper that published mm. that cartoon yeah, about Zelensky, who was Jewish, with the really big nose, yeah. picking Joe Biden's pocket, and then people complained about that, and then they tried to brush it off, and then they couldn't brush it off, so they canceled the contract with the cartoonist, but they didn't fire or put any section for anyone within the Toronto Sun organization that either saw, approved, ran the cartoon, yeah. and just tried the contractor. And you got Lori Goldstein talking all the time about Jew hatred and anti Semitic this and anti Semitic this. You work for an anti Semitic rag, you collect a paycheck from an anti Semitic rag. Why are you still working there? Don't come and talk to me about Jew hatred when you collect your paycheck from people who engage in Jew hatred. On the daily. 
Yeah. So Two, you have no credibility. None. You have none. Now, you know what he did now, do we're once, talking though. about you hatred. I mean, it is rising and it is oh, terrible. Yeah, yeah. But it is. I'm sorry, the Toronto Sun, you are not the paper. I'll, I'll give Laurie Goldstein props on one thing, though. Um, broken clock, right? Broken right. clock. Uh, he came to the defense of Rachel Gilmore because she, like me, takes medication for anxiety and depression. And he came to her defense and said, I wouldn't be here without the medication because I, too, have depression. Props to the man for that. Yes. And I will, you know, two things can be true. One, dude, you sold yourself out for a paycheck. That's true. And you defended a fellow journalist who takes the same style of medication that you and I do. Two things can be true at once. Yep. Yeah. Not, nobody, very few people are horrible 24-7. That's right. Very few people are angels 24-7. That's right. Right? Nuance. Nuance. Uh, videos okay. posted to, sorry. I've got to wrap up in a minute here, sir. I gotta, I'm got i already late for a meeting in the office. Oh. Sorry. Okay, no worries, no worries, no worries. Um, so, yeah, you have uh, the prime minister there saying, uh, you know, saying if these are the people he wants to hang around with. And then, of course, we're talking about Alex Jones, which here's something new, is that the conservatives had to send out a second denial. Mm-hmm because they're still being asked. So this is sticking. And they're yeah. once again saying, like we said before, we do not listen or wrote to this man. So again, they can't say his name. Interesting, right? Well, number one, when you're distancing yourself from someone, but you can't say the name of the person from whom you're distancing yourself, you're not distancing yourself. You're sending the message that you really, 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 really want that endorsement. Well, it's kind of like, you know, they, they never say the, the name of the country that Beijing is in, China. They only ever say Beijing interference. Mm-hmm. Except Beijing didn't interfere, the country of China did. But why don't they say that? Because they tied us to China with the FIPA agreement for 31 years. Yep. Their party did that. Yep. So they can't look bad by saying China did something bad. They can say a city did something bad. And sure, Beijing is where the head of the country is, much like Ottawa is the head of the country in Canada. But if something is done on Canada's behalf, it's Canada that did it, not Ottawa. If something is done on China's behalf, Beijing didn't do it, China did. And it's the government of Canada. Correct. Not the Trudeau government, the government of Canada. It was Harper who wanted to call it the Harper government and call his wife the First Lady. We don't have that here. We never have. It's the Prime Minister's wife. That's it. And uh, also on that note, for anybody who sees something on the internet talking about uh, Pierre winning a supermajority, that's also not a thing. It's not a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so the Prime Minister is going, this is the kind of man who's saying Pierre Polyev has the right ideas to bring the country towards the right, towards conspiracy theories, towards extremism, towards polarization. The fact that he continues to encourage this kind of divisive approaches to Canada that I don't think Canadians want to see reality shows that he will do anything to win, anything to torque up negativity and fear. Period. So pay attention, get some cups, eyes wide open. Get some cups. That's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. Remember that sharing is caring and word of mouth is priceless and you have the mouths from which we want the word to come. So please tell your peeps and poops all about us. If you do not want to miss an episode, you don't have to. Thanks to the Ray Girl. If you scan that QR code that's right below my goatee, that will bring you to our pod page. And if you happen to be listening, that's podpage.com slash the true North Eager Beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. And if you go there and click on subscribe, once you have something fresh off the bandwidth, it comes directly to you. So you do not have to miss a thing. You will get your daily fix when we get the shows loaded up on time. <laughs> what do you mean? That's me. <laughs> I'm still catching up from being involved in two shows, but I'm working on it. I'm working on I it. I know. Yeah. I think the regular, uh, the, the people listening on podcasts are about a, a, a week and two or three days behind yeah. <laughs> where we are right now. We have some uh, to do. 
we have a little bit of work to do. Uh, but we thank you for your patience if you're uh, getting your news a little delayed, uh, if you're listening on the, the ears only version. If you would like to support us in other ways, make like Kit Elaine and go to our True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated YouTube page where you can click our buttons like, share, subscribe, click one, click two, click three. Make like Kit Cassie and lick your button right in front of your cowboy. Fun times. <laughs> it makes us very happy when you click our buttons. Thank you so very much. And if you'd like to help us in other ways, well, that QR code that's right by Mr. Grizzly's head, well, or Mr. Grizzly's head used to be before he leaned in, that will bring you to our coffee page. If you're listening, that's coffee, ko-fi.com slash Eager Beaver, lowercase letters, all in one word. And there you will find our tip jar or the Beaver Lodge Emergency Hydration Fund where you can leave uh, a little something for us. So, you know, if you like the show and would like to buy us a coffee and say, hey, good job, lads. Thank you very much. We would appreciate that very, very, very much. Um, I spend the money on hot chocolate. Mr. Grizzly uses it for coffee. Just so we yeah. transfer. <laughs> because democracy is something that you do kids and cubs please make sure to write those letters uh, if you can uh really really important if there's something that's really important to you please uh, write a letter or even better uh, call the constituency office and ask for a meeting maybe it's time for performance evaluation <clears throat> Just you think from the beaver lodge this is your eager beaver saying it could be a tough world out there, so please be kind to you and gentle with yourself. Mr. Grizzly, do you have some words of wisdom for us? Uh, you know, I, I, as you know, sometimes I get my hackles up and I will get a little intense and call people out for bad things and drop F-bombs and sorry, Mom, but I can't contain my anger and rage at bad people doing bad things to innocent people. And if I didn't stand up and call it out, I would be culpable. But here's the thing that you need to understand, because people go, you're going to have a heart attack. You're just, I'm like, no, man, I'm fine. I meditate. I meditate and I get exercise. I take my dog out every day, a couple of times a day, long walks, deep breathing exercises. So it's okay to fly into a rage when necessary. Mm -hmm. I don't live like that all the time. Mm -hmm. They're momentary glimpses of the rage that's contained within. And I contain it through exercise, meditation, and therapy. So take care of yourself like I take care of me. All right. And with that, Mr. Grizzly, please cue the cock. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters, CanadianTarot.com, their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music. <laughs>